Santa, the land of scent. Hello and welcome everybody. Chris back with another fragrance review. Today it's going to be all about, guess what? Green. And why is that? Because the color, the juice we are going to be talking about today has this color in its name. It's called Bowling Green. Now, that might refer to a lot of things, um, maybe the sport itself, bowling, or there's a city in the U.S. called Bowling Green, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, the name was always kind of interesting to me. I always wanted to know, you know, about this fragrance, you know, what are we looking at here? So I was reading about it, and obviously I've seen that this, um, it, it was quite a popular review, uh, release, sorry, um, in uh, the US um, dating back to 1986 but uh, it got discontinued and uh, I think partially because it did not somehow survive among all those aromatic green you know barbershop fragrances that were flooding the market in the 70s and 80s somehow uh, this, this didn't really get to a point where you know, it could match up with, with Dracar Noir, for example. Um, but it's still quite widely available. They may be still making it. I'm not sure it's strange that it seems to be discontinued, yet it's quite widely available still uh, online. Now, I got this little uh, uh, juice here. It's a 30 mil, fantastic present from John from Florida. Thanks very much again, John. I highly appreciate it. I was looking forward to try this for so many years and now it's sitting here on the table on the green base of the snooker table and uh, I got the chance to test this one. Thanks very much again. And um, so let's dive in there. Geoffrey Bean is the house um, and this juice is called Bowling Green as I mentioned and the actual star of the house is, is, is Grey Fanel, as, as far as I can, uh, you know, detect. Um, but I don't really like Grey Fanel, uh, but I like Bowling Green a lot. This is a fragrance that falls into the category of the, you know, typical uh, green, citrusy, aromatic fragrances, fougère fragrances of, of the 80s. Uh, but yet to me it's special, it's more, something more there. Um, I was, as I said, already intrigued by the name and it has something, I don't know, which is, you know, tr uh, you know somehow, you know, uh, impacting my fantasy there. Um, so what we're talking about is a green aromatic citrus fragrance. Now, I've seen lots of um, reviews on the, on the net and I have to first, uh, you know, I have to start with saying that some people say there's loads of citrus in there, some people say there's barely any. Um, there's a difference in this particular fragrance if you spray it on skin or you spray it on anything else, clothing, hair, whatever, on a hanky or what, whatever, you know, some neutral ground, it develops totally differently. On, on, on fabric, it maintains the citrusy vibe for a long long time so when sprayed on fabric it starts very you know lemon limey uh, with the with the pine cardamom carnation um, well carnation i'm not sure actually um, there's some flowery aspects to it but um surely the 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 you know the there's some brazilian rosewood in there uh, vetiver is in there sandalwood is in there um maybe even as i say maybe even some some flowery aspects maybe you know some rose i'm not exactly sure because this is very dense this is typical 80s dense aromatic um fougere fragrance with a nice very nice lemon limey top on to it now if you spray it again neutral ground fabric it's gonna the the the, the lemon aspect is gonna stay with you uh throughout but on skin, it's totally different. I mean, it's going to die out very soon, um, or it doesn't even appear that prominently on skin. It's, it, on skin, it gets much more herbal, um, herbal aromatic. It really does. Um, it's a fantastic little, very easy going juice here. Very nice on the trigger, and it's just a typical. When it arrived, I have a colleague. Uh, and she immediately said that this reminded her of her grandpa, 
aftershave, you know, and, and cuddling to, to her grandpa. And, and she, I, I sprayed this on a, on a hanky and she wanted to have the hanky and she put it in her, in her bag. And I think she, she's being so much reminded of her grandpa that she, she, you know, she sort of immediately liked the fragrance because of that aspect. Now, is that then a compliment getter? Well, I'm not sure because you don't want to smell like a young girl's uh, or, or uh, you know, uh, young female's uh, grandpa necessarily, but uh, but still it has has a nice vibe around it and, and about it that you know for me makes it a bit different to 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 again those those eighties um, citrusy aromatic fragrances like Draca Noir or or even um, things like. Uh, Wellington, for example, from from Trumper. Although in Wellington there might be some some eucalyptus and mint stuff going on, which is which is not in here. At least I can detect it. But for example, Sportfield from Adidas does the same theme, but there's a little bit of of pineapple in there, which is missing here. So I think this is a very much outdoorsy, citrusy green, aromatic, traditional gentleman's fragrance. This is how I would classify. Uh, I don't know the perfume A behind it, um, but in general I would say that you know due to the performance of this, uh, which is amazingly good, um, I get you know very noticeable uh, projection and silage. It's there, it's gonna make a statement, so easy on the trigger, right? And the longevity is both on skin and on, on fabric or hair or whatever clothes is, is fantastic. It's 24 hours and more. It's really, really good. And um, I would actually recommend to spray it on fabric while wearing it and skin as well, because you get the double you know, effects of, of, of the herbal aromatic and the citrusy limey top notes still carrying on, which are very natural and very, um, very uh, uh, prominent. Also, and very juicy and very bright, very sparkling. There was one review that I've, I've read that this is like walking in a pine forest. It has actually pine and fir, I think, in there as well, oak moss as well. Uh, so it's very, it has a very herbal, earthy aspect to it in the later, you know, dry down, especially. So somebody said that this is like cracking up, a, a cracking open a, a can of Sprite while walking through a. Um, pine forest or something like this. Uh, and it actually not that far-fetched from reality. Uh, it, it has some, some aspect to it. I like it because it's, um, it does the job in a very natural way. Um, it is really um, self-assured and has a great character about it. So I have a good few of those Fougere fragrances from the 70s, 80s. And to me, this one is the best. It has the best top lemon lime note, um, and then it has a development that you know is satisfying and is is well mannered. Um, obviously, in terms of age group, I mean, this is nothing for the teenagers um, and nothing for the guys in their twenties. I, I don't think, you know, even myself being above forty, I will not be able to wear this in the office or something because it's gonna be. It's going to be that grandpa sort of vibe, which I, you know, I, I like in a, in a way, but I don't want to project it because I'm not in that age. So what I will, what would still do, I would wear this when actually walking in the forest, or outdoors, to me, this is, or going to play, I don't know, whatever, golf or something, you know, um, even football maybe. Um, so it is, it is, uh, you know, extremely natural. So that calls for me you know, out of the office environment or out of a closed environment. Although even, let's say, for example, nice Sunday lunches, this could be something that is coming across as, as a classy uh, gentleman-like fragrance. You know, you dress up well or you're going to, to church or whatever, anything like this um, would fit this fragrance for people 30 and above. Um, in general, that's, that's really, you know, it's quite a simple fragrance. Uh, it's nothing groundbreaking here we're looking at, but it's in its genre, in the citrusy, aromatic, herbal, fougere category, 
to me, this is the best I have come across, you know, so far. And that's the final statement for Geoffrey Bean's Bowling Green, which I've been waiting for so long to review, to be able to review, to get it, get my hands on this juice. And finally, I, thanks to John, I, I was able to, to um, you know, review it now. And um, it did not disappoint in any shape or form. It's... It's actually what the name is promising you. Bowling Green's very uh, good marketing uh, there. It's um, classy, refined, refreshing, yet aromatic and gentlemanly. So, thanks very much for your attention, um, and I'll be back, I promise. So that's about you know, going green. Um, green! Everything is so green today, including me. Take care. Oh, no, no, no! Oh my goodness, we are drowned in green.